And finally, we get to Person Noob's special segment. We'll tell you about that momentarily. But first, the match that we would be doing a uh, mini preview of here for number 10 is from the Europa Conference League, round of 16, leg two, the second match of the home and away two-legged tie. The one we would be probably talking about is Slovan Bratislava out of Slovakia versus uh, Basel out of Switzerland, who have kind of underperformed last year and this year to some degree and should be the favorites. We don't know how leg one went, and so that gives us the perfect opportunity to not give you a mini preview because now instead it's time for... Aminals, aminals, aminals from around the world. Yeah. We haven't really decided on a melody, but we're getting closer, yes, we aren't have. we? Oh, we have? That, that I'm not is, sure we quite matched up. That is the theme song, and it's, well, we're like 99% there. Oh, yeah, definitely 99%. All right, so this is the time of show where we take a break from the soccer. We use the sport as a lens, an excuse, if you will, to learn something else about the world. Cute little aminals are near and dear to person noob's heart. What aminal are you here to tell us about this week that makes its home in this, amongst other regions? The corn trick. That sounds like, did you say corn cake? Because that makes me hungry. No, corn cake. Normally we do a, uh, normally we do a culture break this time of show and do a recipe. Do you have a recipe for a corn cake? No. Do we eat them? No. No, why? Corn cakes are friends. And oh, they're they in danger. And if you eat them, then you're mean. Okay, fair enough. Well, let's learn a little bit about the corn cake then. And uh, we'll leave out whether or not it's edible for another time. Uh, is this solely found in Slovakia or where can you really find it? No, Europe, Asia, and China. And it migrates to Africa during our winter. Which oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. It goes to Africa, south of the equator, where it's a little bit warmer during our winter because there it's summer. That would stand to reason. What is it called in Latin? Uh, the crux crux. Which kind of sort of sounds like Count Corn Crake in a very general sense. And why do they call it that? Um, because it's like the emative of call. Oh, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Do you know the term automatopoeia from school yet? Yeah. Okay, well, that's what this is, basically. It's an imitator. So apparently, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, the management, if you could give us the call of the corn crate right now, that'd be super. Oh, that is a terribly, terribly grating noise. What can you tell us about that call? Um, it can be heard almost one mile away. Oh, yuck. I wouldn't want to hear that from one feet away. And when, when does it make it and how often does it make it? Um, early in breeding season. Also, you said one foot. No, you said one feet. Did I say one feet? You said one feet. I wouldn't want to hear one foot or one feet away. I don't want to hear it at all ever again. What a terrible <laughs> noise. That's why I want to eat it. Um, and I see here in your notes that at uh, early in the breeding season, it makes that sound... 20,000 times a night. Did you say thousand? Yeah. That's amazing. That's too many. And to this day, people who have really, really annoying uh, voices are kind of said to have the voice of a corn crake, especially over in Europe. If you have an annoying voice, then you're a corn crake. Yeah, who do, I was going to throw in a name there, call somebody a corn crake. Do we know anybody with a really annoying voice? No, don't go there. I know you're going to say me. Don't you dare do it. <laughs> Think of someone else. <laughs> um, Maybe we should just move on. I have. I have. Someone and their name is I don't have anyone. <laughs> <laughs> is that your way of saying mom? Dad. Anyway, <laughs> tell us a little bit about what they look like. Describe the bird to us. Uh, the gray to brownish, or bleh, gray to brownish black on top. They have a chestnut brown marks on wings, blue gray on underparts, and rust and white on the flanks and tail. Wow, so a fairly colorful bird. Is it a really, really big bird as crakes go, or really, really small? No, it's about medium size. It's mm -hmm. one point. It's one foot on average. Okay. And then what about the wings? Uh, the wingspan on average like one and a half feet or so. You know, compared to the uh, bird that we did last week from the Azores Islands out of the Atlantic, that's actually kind of a short wingspan compared to the body size, isn't it? Interesting. Where does it like to live? Grassland and hayfields. Okay. Um, but it's a land bird. Mm -hmm. It makes ho uh, it makes hollow in ground leaves and grass for night for bleh, for nest eggs. 
uh, for nest eggs. A lot of rail birds like wetlands, but less so with the corn drakes. Okay, so a lot of birds from this family, they like it a little bit moister, but not so much with these guys. They like those hay fields, which hay just sounds very, very dry, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, they've had a hard time counting these over the years, haven't they? They're very secretive. They're hard to count. Uh Uh-huh, why is that? Oh, because they migrate and other stuff, mostly at night. Yeah, they're sort of a nocturnal bird. That's part of how they stay safe. Mm-hmm. Do they need to eat? Uh, they probably need to stay safe, safe from me because I would eat them. No. What sort of things do they eat? Uh, they eat uh, They eat earthworms, slugs, snails, and insects. All right. What sort of things like to eat them? Cats, ferrets, otters, foxes. Um, and if nests are exposed from field mowing, larger birds eat the chicks. Ooh, that's what I want to do. I want to eat the chicks. The baby's got the tender meat. No. Nah. <laughs> I think my daughter is going to do violence on me. Now, um, I'll talk about a couple of the other threats that we researched, if I may. Um, I know when there have been reintroduction efforts over in Western Europe where this bird has become more rare, uh, they've had a lot of parasite issues. And then uh, also habitat loss, like with so many animals, that's really a big deal. Why are they losing their habitats? Oh, because grasslands are being turned into farmland. Yep. Which and the biggest sad. European threat actually is also, even if they're not turning into for- farmland, those hay fields, mm-hmm. they're getting mowed early and earlier in the season because uh, due to drain, uh, uh, increased drainage practices, uh, fertilizers, it means farmers can do what? Uh, they, uh, they can make hay grow faster. That's right. That means that they can harvest it sooner, doesn't it? Yeah. And then they also, uh, they tend to, of course, it's natural. You would start at the edge of a field Mm -hmm. and then start to mow inwards toward the center. Well, guess where the birds like to have their nests? On the edge. On the edge. And so that means that once the mowing starts, the birds don't always have a lot of time to escape. And because they're hidden, uh, yeah, it gets a little bit messy. You get corn crake everywhere. Yeah, that's kind of gross, I know. Now, these are not truly endangered animals. What is their current um, uh, state of being in that regard? Um, They're like least concerned worldwide. Worldwide, yeah. So in uh, the further west you go in Europe, the harder they are to find comparatively. But in other parts of the world, they're actually doing a little bit better, aren't they? Mm-hmm. In 2010, were they doing better or worse? Uh, They were near threatened status. Okay, but they've done a little bit better since then. They've come back up. Yeah. And hopefully, as you help make people more and more aware of these animals, hopefully that it has a butterfly effect and people can uh, learn about these animals and learn that they need to be better uh, conservators of nature and maybe the corn crakes will, uh, you know, do even better and better thanks to you. Yeah. Yeah, that's our hope. Once there are enough of them, can I eat them? No. Uh, what if there were a million of them? No. No, they've got really annoying calls, and if I ate them, I wouldn't have to listen to them. But then they'd be inside of you and make your voice even more annoying, because it already is. All right. You know what I think people most want to hear next? What? Us do the theme song one more time before we go to the bonus matches. Yeah. Aminals, aminals, aminals from around the world. Yeah. <laughs> 